What's going on guys? My name is Crypto Coffee coming to you with your daily dose of Crypto Java. Today is February 15th of 2018. I want to say a few things before we get started. That this video is not really for people that use exchanges to send Bitcoin. Uh, primarily because the exchanges don't allow you to edit the amount of Bitcoin fee you're sending with your Bitcoin transaction. However, I would double check with your specific exchange because some exchanges do allow you to modify the fee that you send with your Bitcoin transaction. Also wanted to say that this video is primarily for those that have their own private wallet that are unsure of how to send Bitcoin efficiently, AKA how much Bitcoin to send as a fee with their outbound transactions. Uh, this video is fairly technical. This video does not cover batched outputs and all links to my research will be in the description with that being said let's get started i want to talk to you guys today about sending bitcoin efficiently now efficiency in bitcoin transactions for me means that you are sending it at the fastest possible speed for the lowest possible price and to kind of determine this we have to ask ourselves first what are bytes and why do they matter in relation to Bitcoin? Now, every transaction contains a certain number of bytes and each byte in your transaction equates to a higher cost. So for example, if you had a hundred bytes in a transaction versus 900 bytes in a transaction, you would pay a significant amount more in fees for the transaction containing 900 bytes. Now, how do we determine how many bytes are in a transaction? Well, first we have to ask ourselves, what is a Bitcoin transaction composed of? And there's two really main elements to a Bitcoin transaction. There are inputs and there are outputs. Now, inputs and outputs uh, can get fairly technical. I'm, I'm going to kind of dive into inputs in just a second here. Uh, but outputs, you just kind of want to know, unless you're doing batched outputting, which is not something I'm going to be covering in this video, you're typically just going to have two outputs for every transaction that you create. One is going to be going to the receiver of the Bitcoin as well as the miner fee. Now that you guys have a basic understanding of what goes into a Bitcoin transaction, I want to move on to what actually affects the number of bytes in your Bitcoin transaction. First thing on the list is going to be compressed versus uncompressed public keys. Now, this is a very, very nuanced thing. Uh, you most likely will not have to worry about this, but check it just in case. Uh, the difference between a compressed and uncompressed public key will be 32 bytes. You'll see this in a later calculation, so you don't have to kind of write this down or anything. But essentially, a compressed public key is kind of the default. Most uh, wallet makers have compressed public keys by default because they're easier to include in blocks. However, uncompressed, they're kind of older, but they still do exist. The easiest way to tell which type of wallet you have is by looking at your private key. If your private key starts with the letter K or the letter L, you have a compressed public key. If the private key starts with the number five, you have an uncompressed public key. So that's just kind of a little nuanced thing just to check so you'll get the most accurate calculation possible. The next thing on the list is going to be unspent outputs. Now I wanted to quickly touch on what a Bitcoin balance is. When you look in your Bitcoin wallet and you see that you have one Bitcoin, you don't essentially have one Bitcoin. You have one unspent transaction from a different wallet claiming that you have the rights to that Bitcoin. Now, that would mean a one-to-one -one ratio. Someone sent you one Bitcoin and you would now be able to send one Bitcoin with only one input. However, I kind of further expand this into this example. If you have two people who gave you half a Bitcoin each, that would mean that your balance is one Bitcoin. However, you have two unspent outputs, which means if you wanted to send that full Bitcoin, you would need to have two inputs coming from the first guy and the second guy. And that would kind of factor into the total number of bytes in your equation. Now I say the word equation because we're going to have two different equations. First one's going to be the uncompressed version and the other one is the compressed version. Pretty self-explanatory, but go ahead and go to the earlier part of the video to determine the difference between the two. But once you've figured out which type of wallet you have, go ahead and use that specific equation. 
Now we're going to go ahead and use the example from earlier with two people sending me half a Bitcoin. Now let's say I wanted to send one full Bitcoin. I would take my compressed version and I would multiply two inputs or two unspent transactions. I'd multiply that by my 148 and that would give me 296. This is 296 bytes so far. Plus I would add in 34 multiplied by the number of outputs. And remember earlier I said there are only two outputs per transaction for your standard transaction. 34 times two is gonna give you 68. Now this 10 byte addition is for a number of different things. There are all kinds of things that go into a transaction. So this is more or less tacked on as a, you know, technical, technical aspect to the equation and plus or minus one multiplied by the number of inputs. Now the number of inputs in this situation is two. So we're going to have 296 plus 68 plus 10 plus or minus two, which is gonna give us a range of 372 to 376 bytes for our specific transaction. Now we're gonna look at a real life example. This is an actual transaction that occurred on the blockchain and you can see that they have a final number of 223 bytes for this specific transaction. How is this determined? The equation. So we'll just take the two nuggets of information that we really need and that is that it has one input and two outputs. Now going back to our equation, I've already kind of done the math for us but I use the compressed version of the equation this is going to be 1 times 148 because we only had one input plus 2 times 34 which is going to be our two outputs multiplied by 34 plus the erroneous 10 technical fee plus or minus 1 times 1 and that is going to be the 1 multiplied by the number of inputs we have. This will give us a range of 225 to 227 bytes and we were very close the actual number is 223 However, in this equation, it uses the more conservative method where it puts you just a hair over so that you're guaranteed to fall within certain ranges, which I'll explain in just a moment. But right here we can see, got it right. Now I just wanted to also show you guys, this is kind of the precursor to the transaction we just looked at, and this is the person's wallet of receiving the funds before he sent them out. So this was the initial transaction we looked at where he sent out 0 0.07604 to a different wallet but if you look here this is where he received it so you can see that he only had one input going into his wallet which gave him 0 0.076 now if he had multiple inputs going in here and he sent more than this you would see more inputs going out to kind of fulfill that transaction so this is an example of a one-to-one -one ratio where there's really one input two outputs this is your standard Bitcoin transaction now if you look here this is a transaction with multiple inputs and then the standard two outputs but you can see if you look up here you can see 965 bytes for this transaction well what does that mean did he send too much Bitcoin no he did send more Bitcoin than the last guy however if you look and do the math he has six inputs two outputs let's go to our handy equation 6 multiplied by the 148 again I'm using the compressed version plus 2 times the 34 and 10 you'll end up with 960 to 972 bytes sound familiar that looks like to me the 965 bytes it falls right in that range alright so now we have our number of bytes that we need for our specific Bitcoin transaction to go through well, what do we do with this information? I'm gonna leave the link in the description, but you're gonna head over to this website. And this is basically displaying the active Bitcoin transactions in the past 24 hours and in the past 336 hours. So essentially it's a kind of an aggregate of information that is very, very helpful to send it the fastest way possible. I'll give you guys a quick walk through the website. It's gonna to default to Satoshi's per byte right here on the side on the left hand side and you'll notice that there is a range of 1 to 10 satoshis and you see that it's abnormally kind of clogged up if you will with transactions 
That's because some people want to send it for cheaper and they don't mind waiting, you know, the time to wait, which leads me over here to the delay. This is a delay in blocks. So every one to three blocks, you will your transaction will be added into the blockchain and it will be confirmed and it will send. This is actually very, very good. I remember when this used to say, this is infinity, by the way. I remember when this used to say infinity all the way down here till like 81 to 90 Satoshis. I mean, if you sent it in that, you were waiting for a while. But right now, it's actually a really good time to send uh, Bitcoin. But so this is going to be the number of blocks it takes to, on average, confirm your transaction and the amount of time you'll be waiting for that transaction to confirm. So if you're like me and you want to pay the cheapest for the best possible result, you'll kind of look down and anywhere where it starts to turn green is where you want to do it because on average it's going to send on the very next block on average and it's going to have a wait time of 0 to 30 minutes. Now everyone knows that the Bitcoin blocks um, kind of confirm every 15 minutes so it's in 15 minute intervals that's why that is but if you were to send it for this amount you would get the cheapest possible with the fastest result. Now for this range of 111 to 120, I typically like to go, you know, one or two over. Uh, so I, I would go with 112 Satoshis for this range. So you're, I, I like to take the base unit to make sure I have the right decimal place when I'm doing my calculation. So I always start out with one Satoshi, you know, multiply it by 112. Uh, that just kind of ensures that you're getting the right decimal place because that would really be bad <laughs> if you get the wrong decimal place. So once you have your 112 uh, Satoshis written out, multiply that by 965, that's gonna be your number of bytes, and that is gonna get you to your final number of 0 0.0010808 Bitcoin. This is going to be the optimal fee to attach to your Bitcoin transaction to ensure that it gets sent the fastest for the cheapest possible price. Thanks so much for staying till the end of the video, guys. I know it was a very, very long one today. I'm looking to push out a lot more content in the near future because I've been fairly busy with exams, but thankfully my schedule is fairly clear on the horizon. If you learned anything from this video, please like, share, subscribe. Uh, and if you disagreed with anything I said or you think I got something wrong, please let me know in the comments. I will fix it. I will chat with you. Uh, but other than that, Crypto Coffee out.